Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Let's continue our lectures on optimal control gradient and estimation course. And we last class we have started this constraint optimal control and derived some basic philosophies or basic principles about this constraint optimal control, largely inspired from contrarians of minimum principle. So let us continue our discussion on those lines. And this particular lecture I will talk about. Little more, little more at, uh, on time optimal control rather actually. Anyway, the topics on constraint optimal control that we are talking about is uh, first is little bit motivation. We have given that in the last class. Then Pantriazin's principle. We have derived that in the last class as well. And then this particular lecture, I will talk in detail about time optimal control of linear time invariant systems. Okay, especially we'll uh, towards the end of this lecture, we'll take uh, time optimal control of double integral system which is a very standard kind of benchmark problem and then we will try to demonstrate how do you kind of get it get the control for I mean control for this double integral system in a closed form sense actually okay and that too in a state feedback sense basically all right so that is we will see that then then the rest of the topics will contain a little bit on fuel optimal control possibly on energy optimal control if time permits and then a state constraint optimal control little bit glimpse of that actually and more on that you can read in several textbooks as well actually all right uh, to start with let's uh, go through just uh, one slide about summary of pantriazin's uh, minimum principle that we discussed in the last class so the objective was something like this to find an admissible time history of the control variable from uh, t0 to tf okay such that uh, all other objectives that we have been studying about uh, throughout the course is met, but the only condition is the control is constrained actually, okay? either in a total norm sense or component wise it is constrained between plus uh, I mean plus certain value and, and minus certain value actually. So, it is constrained between the two uh, allowable limits actually. All other things are as it is, the, the control history subject to this uh, control bound so, it caused the system governed by this, this nonlinear system dynamics to follow an admissible trajectory. So, it also optimize uh, certain meaningful performance index and also force the system to satisfy appropriate boundary condition. Everything is there, but only thing is this uh, control is now constrained actually. So, what was the outcome of uh, the analysis last class? Is something like this. Uh, if you can still go ahead and define uh, Hamiltonian the regular way. And still most of the conditions are satisfied. I mean, state equation is satisfied, co-state equation is satisfied as well as boundary condition is also satisfied. The only difference is about the optimal control equation. We can't write del h by del u equal to 0 and try to solve the control. On, I mean, instead of that, we have to really analyze this inequality. Uh, Hamiltonian of uh, x u star lambda is less than equal to Hamiltonian of uh, x u lambda. So, this inequality should give us okay, some u star actually. Okay. So, how do you get it and things like that we will uh, we'll discuss in this particular uh, lecture about uh, LTI systems and all that. All right. So, let us go ahead and start the topic uh, and rest of the course largely about control constraint problems we will be interested in LTI systems only that is linear time invariant systems where things are easier to see, easier to analyze and, and visualize also basically. And interestingly, it will also turn out that even though the system is uh, linear, the control structure will be eventually non-linear actually. So, hold your breath uh, towards the end of this lecture, we will see that actually. All right. So, the problem is something like this. Uh, uh, means, uh, mean what you are interested in is to minimize the time taken for, for an LTI system to go from an arbitrary initial state to the desired final state. So, we start with certain point uh, in state space and you want to go somewhere uh, okay. and then uh, okay, let us uh, picturally show that uh, 
we start in certain initial condition x naught and we want to set go certain point x f okay and that should happen in 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 minimum time actually okay all right so what it what you next visualize is uh, something like okay we'll uh, put the well we'll uh, put an axis system let's say okay we'll put a axis system let's say like this okay at the desired final state so then uh, it turns out that uh, the desired system i mean desired final uh, point is nothing but the origin actually so that is uh, 0 0 so that's without loss of generality you can do that so uh, the analysis becomes easier actually okay so essentially you, if you if you drive certain initial conditions and all possible initial conditions in the state space rather towards the origin then that's the, that's the problem which is called as regulator problem we are, we are interested in regulating the state about 0 0 actually so essentially it becomes time optimal regulator problem we want to drive any initial condition towards the final state uh, which is nothing but the origin in the state space actually okay. all right because you are talking about system dynamics being linear or rather lti the system dynamics takes in this form x dot is x plus bu where x is uh, an n dimensional vector and u is an m dimensional vector and uh, this uh, okay and a b are actually constant matrices okay and we are constant matrices actually okay so that means uh, this satisfies the, the linear structure as well as time invariant things because and we are constant matrices actually all right uh, the key point here is the control magnitude satisfies this uh, this constraint or uh, rather actually we can think about uh, putting it in a norm sense and all that uh, something like norm of u is less than equal to certain capital u and all that actually or more more structured wise more easier to visualize is something like this component wise if i take uh, u1 u2 u3 like that component wise they are actually bounded between certain values and uh, without loss of generality again we are taking that asymmetric value sort of thing so that one condition we can describe actually okay uj is less than equal to uj sort of thing all right so this uh, u minus is the lower bound uh, or uj minus is the lower bound of uh, this small uj and uj plus will be the upper bound of this uh, this small uj basically okay. So again, uh, without loss of generality, we can uh, we can assume that uh, these bounds are nothing but minus one and plus one, and we can do that by observing the magnitude into the B matrix actually. So if you if you normalize this U, the component wise, and this uh, whatever this normalizing variable, we can observe that in the B matrix, and then whatever the normalized variable will contain in the the control components, and hence we can write the control is constrained between minus one vector and plus one vector or rather component wise this is constrained u j magnitude is constrained to be less than equal to one all right so the assumption here is the system is state controllable uh, it will turn out later that this turns out to be kind of a necessary condition for something called normal time optimal control problems okay if, if it does not satisfy it will lead, leads to well uh, abnormal, abnormal situation that is something like singular control and all that actually we will we'll see that as you go along actually. all right the problem here is uh, again to restate uh, formally the to find an optimal control uh, u star which satisfies this uh, component wise constraints u j mod less than equal to 1 and which takes the system from any initial state x naught to the final state 0 or that is origin in minimum time so that uh, that boils down to that kind of a statement and subject to the still the system dynamics being this one actually okay all right so step one we will start the solution process first uh, first uh, first thing first uh, we want to put our objective in the in mathematical form okay so what you are interested here is uh, time optimization and in other words minimum time problem so going back to the control structure in the very first slide this this objective function needs to be defined okay. so here you can take uh, phi equal to 0 and l equal to 1 and then we'll end up with uh, this this kind of a cost function t0 to tf is nothing but tf minus t0 so this is the quantity that needs to be 
minimized. Also remember that T naught is fixed, but T f needs to be free here. Because if T f is also fixed, there is nothing to minimize really actually. That is a constant number, T f minus T naught also becomes a constant number. We can talk about minimizing that quantity and all that. So, so by default, T f happens to be a free variable here actually. Okay. All right. Now, step 2, we have to start the solution procedure because now we have a cost function. Okay. L is 1 and phi is 0 and we have a state equation x dot is x plus du and then we are, we are ready to write the Hamiltonian actually. Okay. So, h of x lambda u is something like uh, 1 plus 1 is L plus lambda transpose f and f is x plus v u. Okay. So, that turns out to be 1 plus if I expand this quantity and, uh, and also observe that I can take uh, this transpose. Uh, I mean, I can alter the transpose because we know that uh, in linear algebra something like x transpose y is equal to y transpose x provided this resulting x, trans x transpose y happens to be a scalar quantity. Okay. That means, uh, this is the multiplication of two vector happens to be a scalar. So, I can really do that in a reverse sense also. In, in other words, it is x 1 y 1 plus x 2 y 2 plus x 3 y 3 like that and this is nothing but y 1 x 1 plus y 2 x 2 and like that. So, both are similar quantity. So, that operation has been carried out here. Okay. So, you can you can write it something like a x transpose times lambda also and b u transpose times lambda also and b u whole transpose is nothing but u transpose b transpose. We, we know that actually. So, it is written that way. Then the state and costed equations uh, we can now write something like this. Also, let me kind of put a comment here that if you see the textbook uh, and, and largely I am following this uh, this material from Naidu book, uh, everywhere you will find stars uh, notation, they have been x star, lambda star and things like that. I thought I will simplify that by keeping only u star notation for optimal control and x and lambda I will not put stars actually. Okay, so, but that, uh, that still means that we are talking about optimal control. In other words, optimal state trajectory and optimal co-state trajectory as well actually. Anyway, so this of uh, the state and co-state equation can be derived uh, very quickly as like this x dot is del h by del lambda which is nothing but the same state equation with optimal control function of course. And then lambda dot is minus del h by del x and then h being like this we can uh, compute del h by del x is nothing but uh, coming from here lambda dot is uh, del h by del x. So, x transpose a transpose lambda sort of thing. So, this to be okay this quantity ok let me do that this quantity is nothing but x transpose a transpose lambda and if I take uh, derivative of that uh, with respect to x I think uh, with this only this part will remain actually. So, this is a transpose missing probably all right. So, this is uh, this is how it is actually. So, x dot is a x plus b u and lambda dot is minus a transpose lambda. All right, so the boundary condition still remains same. Uh, x uh, x of uh, zero is x naught, and x of T f is zero because that's our final objective. But T f is free. Remove that actually. Now step four is the critical thing. We want to see what kind of optimal control that leads to actually. And remember, we have to find a control u star which is optimal in such a way that this Hamiltonian what you are seeing here with respect to u star is less than equal to any other Hamiltonian with respect to a non-optimal u really. Okay. So, that means, if I substitute this uh, this Hamiltonian expression here okay, and uh, try to kind of see what is going on, then uh, one of what I observe here is uh, 1 and 1 will cancel out from both sides and this quantity also remains similar. Okay. So, same rather th that will also get cancelled out. So, we will end up with some, some expression like this u, u star transpose times q star is less than equal to u transpose times q star where q star is defined something like this. Okay. Well, for simplicity, we just define this b transpose lambda to be q star. So, we can write it that way. Now, we have to find a u, I mean, uh, so what does it tell us? I mean, this inequality okay, tells us that this q star, uh, I mean, this u star transpose q star is nothing but minimization of this u star q star with, re, with this constraint in, in place actually. Okay. So, now the question is what makes what kind of minimum value it can really take this this u really. Okay. 
Now, Q star happens to be you can think of it as something like a, a number basically. So, Q star is already known to us. Now, we have to find a select a u such that this quantity will become minimum. So, obviously, we do we need to see two conditions here. One case is if Q star uh, happens to be positive, okay, then obviously, this is positive. So, I can I can drag it down by putting a minus sign here minus 1. Okay. So, that is the best I can do as long as Q star is positive. And if Q star is negative, I can do the reverse and I can still be obtain the minimum by putting u, star, u equal to plus 1 actually. So, all that it boils down is as long as Q star is positive, I simply apply, apply minus 1. And if Q star happens to be negative, then suddenly I will have, have to apply U star is plus 1 actually. So, this can be written something like this uh, final solution U j star component wise again, the signum of uh, Q j star with a negative sign. This happens to be positive, then I will apply negative. If it happens to be negative, I will apply positive actually. Okay. So, in a very compact sense, we can write Uj star is negative of signum of this Qj star. Qj star by definition is B transpose lambda, which is nothing but Bj transpose lambda. Bj happens to be, uh, I mean, the corresponding column vector actually. A small spelling mistake. Okay. Okay. So that is uh, uh, that is how it is. Okay. Now, signal signal function. I think is very clear. Those of you who don't know really, this is this is how it is pictorially represented. As long as some quantity is uh, less than zero, uh, okay, then the output is uh, minus one. As long as positive, the output is plus one. So if I just attach a negative sign, the, this objective is met actually. Okay. All right. Now here is a, a case. Now this will result in uh, in a situation uh, where it, the question is whether this happens to be either strictly greater than zero or strictly less than zero for all time. Okay. And it turns out that it may not be the case. And if it can actually uh, switch sign from zero to I mean positive to negative and things like that. Now if that happens, then does it uh, switch times? I mean switch from positive to negative side in finite uh, number of uh, cases. Or does it happen like uh, for a segment it remains zero and all that actually? So that that also becomes a reality now. So so what uh, what we are asking here is something like that. Okay, the normal time optimal control system, the condition happens to be like this: that uh, during this interval something like t naught to t f or t f star rather, because we have to find an optimum final time also. So within this uh, within this uh, time zone, there exists a set of times t one, t two, up to t gamma j. Okay, where gamma varies with 1, 2, 3, whatever our number of switches and all that, where j varies from 1 to m. That means that j stands for the components of the control and gamma varies, uh, gamma stands for like number of crossings actually. Okay. So, ultimately it will happen to cross something like uh, t 1, t 2 up to t gamma j times basically at the maximum. So, there exists a set of times, uh, this, uh, this times actually t 1, t 2, etcetera. Okay where this q j star satisfies this condition. That means, it is 0 if and only if t is exactly equal to this, this gamma, I mean this uh, gamma j quantity sort of thing actually. Okay. If and only if, uh, if it continue, I mean if it, uh, uh, if it is, if and only if t equal to this discrete point, then only it is 0, otherwise it is not 0 actually. Okay. So, that means, pictorially speaking, okay, you have this, this time axis okay, and we are plotting this quantity q star j. Okay. We are all asking is, okay, if it is positive, if it is positive, but if it changes, it will change one time in a discrete point only basically. Okay. So, this is, this is allowed, but if I talk about something like uh, this one uh, and it remains 0 and then it goes positive and remains 0 comes down. And this kind of things, this finite segment, it becomes zero, and those kind of things are are not allowed actually. Okay, if it if this kind of things are not allowed, but this is okay, this is there, then that is something called normal time optimal control problem actually. Okay. Okay. Otherwise, uh, it will be kind of it will be called singular optimal control. 
So, normal time optimal controls uh, have little more elegant solutions and things like that. So, let us study that actually. So, this is picture really written, I mean, given uh, also in the book. Uh, you can see that there. As long as QJ Q can flip over, can change signs, but it has to change time at discrete point of times only. Okay. And then, as, as per our uh, result says, Okay. As long as q star is positive, then u star is minus 1 and q star is negative, then u star is to be plus 1. So, this is what it tells us, q star happens to be positive here, so u star happens to be minus 1. Then q j star is negative here, so u j star is positive 1. And then again, this is positive here, q j star, so u j has to be minus 1 and things like that. Okay. So, now you can very quickly see also that uh, this is either minus 1, then suddenly goes to plus 1. Okay then stays there and again comes to minus 1 and then stays there and, and instantaneously change to plus 1 stays there for like that actually. So, this is uh, I mean intuitively and also logically it is called bank bank control. It actually just goes to minus 1 the maximum bound then banks to the plus 1 the other side then goes there and then again banks to the other side like that actually. It is called bank bank control actually. Okay. All right. So, this normal time optimal control system, the opti optimal control is finally given by this uh, this expression and essentially it is a piecewise constant function of time. I mean this this is constant what for a piece and then again it is a constant for a piece and things like that. And you can clearly see that uh, the solution nature happens to be nonlinear actually. Okay. It does not does not stay linear even with even if you plot with respect to x actually we will see that little later it does not remain linear actually. This is this is what is plotted with respect to time, but even if you plot it with respect to state, it does not remain linear really. Okay. All right. So, this is the this is bank bank control actually. Okay. All right. Now, that that does not happen. So, that in other words q j not only remains uh, not only remains positive or changes sign at, at finite point of time. Okay. This this changes time. I mean, signal at a discrete point here and discrete point here, but it also remains zero for a finite interval of time. Okay, t one to t two. Okay, and then that is called singular singularity interval, and the resulting control is called singular uh, control sort of thing. Actually. Okay, in other words, the problem is called singular time optimal control, where in this this segment t one to t t one to t two control is really not defined okay. and while implementing okay you can uh, you can put it 0 and things like that because it is not defined. So, I will continue to apply 0, but that is not the case here the mathematically speaking within T 1 to T 2 the control is really not defined. Okay. So, that is what is mentioned here during singularity intervals the time optimal control is not really defined. Okay. All right. So, in that case it is called singular time optimal control, it is not very elegant uh, uh, because of this uh, this undefined nature of the control structure and all that. All right. Now, the, con the condition is suppose it happens like that then very natural question is when does it happen. Okay. So, we like to know that actually. Okay. So, for that we need to find a solution uh, uh, of lambda and all that. So, let us uh, start uh, doing that actually. So, now assume that lambda 0 initial condition of lambda is not I mean that is not 0 okay, that is some some value lambda not and then u star is the negative signum of q star what q star is b star plus lambda but lambda is time varying lambda of t really okay. but lambda dot remember lambda dot we derived some time back here is minus a transpose lambda. Okay. So, that is what is uh, written here okay, minus minus signum b transpose this b transpose coming from here and lambda is nothing but e to the power minus a transpose t times lambda naught that is uh, that is because okay, lambda dot okay, is a transpose lambda okay. <coughs> okay, minus a transpose lambda really. Okay. So, the solution of lambda happens to be e to the power minus a transpose t times lambda naught from linear system theory is very clear. All right. Now, component wise if I try to analyze that then all that I have to do is instead of uh, B transpose I will put uh, B j transpose really okay, that is that will lead to my u j star actually. 
So, if Qj star happens to be equal to 0 throughout this interval, identically equal to 0 throughout this interval, then obviously one observation is in this interval all its derivatives are also 0. It is not only the function is 0, but because it is 0 and constant 0 throughout this interval, then all its derivative needs to be 0 as well actually. Okay. So, that means uh, Qj star is 0, Qj star dot, now that also can be computed from this expression now with uh, A transpose will, will come here, okay. that will become 0, well all these negative signs will keep changing and all that actually. So, that is ignored here, but uh, identical, I mean if you take derivative of that then negative sign will come here and this will be positive again, the other one second, I mean third derivative will be negative like that actually. All right, so that does not matter. The question here is uh, if negative sign is 0, then positive sign is also 0 actually. So, that can be omitted also basically. Okay. Anyway, so coming back, uh, Qj star is 0, Qj star dot is 0, Qj star double dot is 0, you keep on doing that. And then in the process, the, this resulting matrices will turn out to be all 0 actually. Okay. So, for better analysis, we will take positive quantity only basically. Although, Otherwise, this can be forgotten actually. Okay. All right. So up to q n minus one, uh, the one derivative if you take that happens to be like that, and hence combining all the results, you can you can really write that okay. G j transpose is e transpose e to the power eight and minus a transpose t lambda zero is zero. Okay. Now g j happens to be this matrix. If you if you see this carefully. Okay, Gj happens to be Gj transpose is collection of all these transposes and all that. So Gj, okay, with transpose of everything, then it will split, it will flip. So this will become a, a times b. This will become a square times bj like that actually. All right. So all these are collected here, and then tell okay, Gj happens to be bj, a bj like that actually is there. Now, if you do that, repeat that exercise for j equal to 1 to m and all that, so it will turn out to be this this expression, okay. All these bj's will can, can be combined uh, and then analyzed uh, appropriately and then put it together, then it turns out to be that g transpose e trans e to the power minus lambda a minus a transpose t times lambda naught is equal to 0. Now, the thing that is uh, that can be observed is any exponential function of time is never 0. Okay. It happens to be 0 only at t equal to minus infinity provided a transpose is positive or plus infinity if a transpose is negative, but that, that, that does not, I mean uh, sorry, yeah, uh, e to the power minus uh, a transpose t never 0, that is more important actually okay, for all finite time intervals and all that. And by nature, lambda naught is not 0 also, okay, we started doing that. And then the only possibility of uh, having, I mean, this only possibility that this uh, this solution, this equation will have a solution, is when this matrix is actually singular. Okay. So what you are telling here, this situation, okay, this situation arises only when this matrix becomes singular actually. Okay. And you can very clearly see that this is nothing but the controllability matrix actually. Okay. So, in other words, uh, for normal time optimal control problems, G must be non singular. That means the system should be completely state controllable. Okay. So, if the system happens to be uh, state controllable and then this condition, this G, I mean, this uh, singular optimal control condition is not satisfied, and hence we will end up with normal time optimal control problems. Okay. So, let us assume that our subsequent systems are actually controllable and then carry out uh, further thing actually. Before doing that, some observations here. Uh, singular intervals uh, cannot exist for a completely controllable system because this condition will not be satisfied actually. The second one is the necessary and sufficient condition for normal time optimal control is that the system is completely state controllable. Or conversely, you can also tell like this, the necessary and sufficient condition for the singular time optimal control is that the system is uncontrollable actually. Now, there is also interesting theorems uh, which tells us some uniqueness nature of the problem okay, and tells that okay, when is the when is the solution unique, the next question is that actually. So, 
this turns out that if the time optimal system is normal okay then the optimal control solution is also unique okay it cannot have multiple solutions and all that and in that situation there is also an interesting observation in in the form of a theorem which tells us that the how many maximum number of switches can can there be and it turns the and it, the, the theorem tells us that if the original system is normal that means state controllable and if all n eigen values are real okay then u star can switch at most n minus 1 times actually that means all switching from minus 1 to plus 1 and from plus 1 to minus 1 counted if you count all that then maximum number of switches can be uh, at the most n minus 1 actually okay so let us see that uh, i mean these are the uh, observations which will help us a little later also basically all right the uh, structure of the time optimal control now uh, about all these observations and all we can derive certain structure structural form of the control solution really so the the problem is again just to summarize we have a state equation something like this linear time invariant system subject to this control constraint okay objective is x not should be driven towards zero with minimum time under these constraints actually and the solution that we derived is something like this u star is the negative sigma of vj transpose times lambda or something like this okay. lambda solution is this one so then uh, somebody can think about a easy way of doing that that okay well if this is the case then the only thing that is not known to me is really lambda not okay the initial condition of lambda not then well i can uh, i can start with some guess value i'll i'll guess some lambda not then everything else will be self driven now this this uh, this expression can evolve once once lambda not is known to us actually okay so i keep computing this this uh, expression and uh, evaluate the sign negative sigma of that expression really actually so that's my use star that's all so i assume we lambda not compute lambda of t evaluate u j star okay u j star is like this okay and then solve for the system trajectory in parallel as well because once u j star is known everything is known for this system actually okay now this becomes a uh, kind of an explicit function of uh, time so this is known to us so starting from any initial condition okay that which is known to us anyway we start integrating the system dynamics okay and then observe that for some finite time tf where, where xtf is going to zero or not okay and if tf becomes sufficiently large we are not happy about that you know we know that it is not going to happen then uh, we terminate that uh, that procedure or that integration process come back and and guess a different lambda not actually okay so we change this lambda not and repeat the procedure okay. this is actually an open loop structure where lambda not you guess and hope for the best if it doesn't happen you change the lambda not and again repeat the procedure again hope for the best now obviously it's not a very good uh, strategy and we can land up with this infinite loop sort of thing uh, unless there is a mechanism where lambda not can be adjusted in an appropriate direction or appropriate uh, increment so that the subsequent uh, iteration can uh, can lead me to a better result and remember tf is is free variable okay and so it is even more difficult to to find out what tf is there and all that actually okay. so this procedure even though it is very simple it is it's actually not really very useful okay so this open loop structure is uh, not very elegant but still somebody wants to implement it this is the way to do that you know this initial condition of the state okay now you can start this uh, iteration okay guess the lambda not and go to this uh, coarsed equation find out lambda star and then multiplying with that and all that you'll give uh, q star well the book notation is big q but what you see here is small q okay so this uh, negative q star sort of thing okay so then you can uh, you can re you can pass through a relay function and all that you will get u star and then continue that iteration and finally you are assuming that okay after some time uh, whether xf is zero or not okay if uh, tf is sufficiently large and xf is still not zero then okay well my guess was itself was not good so we'll change this lambda not and repeat the procedure actually all right so again as i told that's not very elegant what you are looking for 
is something like a closed uh, loop structure. In other words, control should be some form, some form of a state feedback form. And remember that in a regular LQR system, where the objective was also fairly similar, uh, but we did not have this control constraint in place actually. Okay. Then what we had? We had this uh, u transpose equal to minus r inverse uh, v transpose p times x basically. So, essentially we are having a closed form formula basically uh, instead feedback form. So, here also we are looking for something like that is it feasible or not. Well, in other words u star can be written as negative signum of this h of x and because we also see that this is lambda and lambda in regular LQR it was nothing but p times x. We can write it here uh, we know that. But still getting inspired from that we can observe that the moment somebody writes p times x here this essentially becomes a state feedback form. Okay. So, similarly we are hunting out for a for an expression for h of x okay, which will solve the similar purpose actually. Okay. All right. So, any analytical and computer computational algorithm essentially we are talking about this kind of a structure where we know that h of, h of x is nothing but b times lambda. But what you are looking for is lambda as a function of x actually, okay, which is where x is x itself is time varying depending on the system dynamics and all that actually. So, essentially this function needs to be developed, okay, what, what you are seeing there and that depends on problem to problem actually. So, essentially ne next few lectures and uh, next few slides I will take you through some uh, this idea of how to develop this through this uh, standard benchmark example problem this is nothing but a double integrator system actually. Okay. But once you have this in place, okay, this so let us say you have this h of x in place, then the, the operation becomes much easier. This is uh, you take this x star out of this and then pass it through this algorithm of whatever algorithm is that to compute this uh, h of x star okay, or rather negative h of x star and all that and then pass it through the relay function and then you get it u star actually, then it will implement. So, this is essentially a closed loop time optimal control implementation much much desirable compared to the structure really. Okay. So, let us see how you do that at least, at least in a small example sense actually which is a very standard example in test tools of course. So, here we are talking about time optimal control of double integral systems really. Okay. Now, these double integral systems uh, appear uh, naturally in many many applications and the very simplest form I can think about is uh, just a spring mass uh, application actually not even no damper just spring mass actually if you see that. Okay. So, you have uh, uh, here the vibration is something like m y double dot is f actually but the same thing can be expressed you can visualize a frictionless car moving on the road. Okay. The moment you apply a force there is acceleration things like that a dragless airplanes actually. So, then it will it will happen like this equation will, will observe like that I mean this equation will be observed. Even in electrical circuit, similar things can be written also basically. All right. Uh, so the state variable uh, we can define x1 as y and x2 as y dot. Okay. Then the double integral system can be written very easily rather that x1 dot is x2, whereas x2 dot is u. U is nothing but f over m. So essentially, you are writing y double dot is nothing but f by m, and then defining this first canonical form. Okay. You can first companion form we can write this way very easily. The difference here is u is constrained again between minus 1 and plus 1 that is what it is given here. Okay. So, once this is uh, this is in place I tell okay, what is happening we will do, we'll see that in a much more detailed sense actually. So, we come back to this uh, this problem and tell okay, system dynamics is x 1 dot is x 2. Well, x1 dot is x2 okay whereas uh, x2 dot is u okay and this is subject to this constraint uh, that uh, i mean magnitude of u is found between minus 1 and plus 1 and then uh, that uh, that constraint is valid for all time between t0 to tf the objective is to find an admissible control history such that this condition x1 0 x2 0 is driven towards origin in minimum time. And here you are assuming a normal optimal control, normal time optimal control sense that means no singular control. And you can very clearly see that this controllability is actually defined. In other words, okay, okay, control is this actually a state controllable problem actually. So, you can see that this can be written as x dot equal to 
okay a x plus b u okay um, u is 1 here of course. So, this is nothing there and x 1 dot is x 2 and that is what it is actually okay. So, this is your a matrix and that is your b matrix. So, controllability matrix if you if you formulate sometimes people write as e sometimes m like that. So, this is b and a b okay. So, that is nothing but something like 0 1 and if you multiply that it still becomes 1 0 okay. This is 0 0 plus 1 times 1 this is 1 and then obviously, second one is 0. So, this is if you take determinant of z okay and obviously, the determinant is happens to be minus 1 which is not 0. So, obviously, the state controllable problem actually. Okay. So, normal time optimal control condition is valid here. All right, performance index as usual we select T f minus T naught minimum time optimum minimum time problem actually and then Hamiltonian is uh, is also very straightforward 1 plus lambda transpose f actually. So, lambda transpose x plus v u. So, essentially lambda 1 times x 2 plus lambda 2 times u. Okay. So, we write that way and according to this Pontryagin's minimum principle this condition has to be satisfied that is the critical observation. So, if I substitute this okay, this expression once with respect to u star the other one is with respect to any other u these two quantities will cancel out okay. What will remain is only this quantity lambda 2 of uh, lambda 2 times u star has to be less than equal to lambda 2 times u okay. So, the optimal control should be u star is nothing but negative signum of lambda 2. So, that is a very clear cut observation actually. So, all that you need to know is uh, is lambda 2 really okay. Now, to how do you find out we, we go back to the quotient equation now. Now, remember lambda dot is minus a transpose uh, lambda really, but you can go back and tell okay, mom, lambda 1 dot is nothing but del h by del minus del h by del x. So, h is here. Okay. So, del h by del x 1 is nothing but uh, 0, whereas del h by del x 2 uh, is nothing but lambda 1. You can this, this can be clearly seen here. So, lambda 1 dot is negative of del h by del x 1 0, lambda 2 dot is negative of del h by del x 2 which is lambda 1 del this del h by del x 2 in lambda 1. So, it is negative lambda 1. Now, if it is 0 lambda 1 dot is 0 then lambda 1 of any lambda 1 of t is nothing but the same initial condition lambda 1 0 it does not change from that value. Now, if lambda 2 dot is negative lambda 1 that means minus lambda 1 of 0 then lambda 2 t is nothing but this the integral of this equation. So, lambda 1 of 0 times t plus lambda 2 of 0. Okay. So, this results in essence I mean essentially this results in 4 possibilities because you this is a straight line equation you can see that. Okay. This is it's like something like uh, y equal to m x plus c sort of thing, but this is lambda 2 is nothing but some coefficient negative of that times t plus some other coefficient. So, in time and uh, uh, this one in in time versus lambda 2 plot okay, if I if I see that is guaranteed to be a straight line. Now, depending on the situation it can be like that, it can be like this, it can be just a constant, it can be like this like that actually. Okay. So, there are, there are 4 possibilities like that depending on the, the, the constants this lambda 1 naught and lambda 2 naught actually. So, all the 4 cases we need to see what is happening there. So, this is uh, pictorially written here either lambda 2 can be like this in which case lambda 2 is always negative remains negative starts negative and remains negative it is this building in the negative direction. Then according to our law of control it is negative signum of lambda 2. So, control has to be plus 1. Okay. Similarly, if lambda 2 happens to be all positive then the control has to be minus 1 throughout actually. That is very clear. Now, what about the case like this it, it starts from negative, but because of the sloping because the slope is positive it goes like this. So, at some instant it actually crosses the 0 line. Okay. That means, up to that this value is negative hence my control is positive and after that this value is negative I mean sorry this lambda 2 value is positive and hence my control is negative. Okay. So, I start with a positive value of control and I go to negative value and here it is exactly opposite I start with a positive value of lambda 2 and hence my control was negative and later I my lambda 2 happens to be negative hence my control becomes positive. 
Okay. So, you can see the switching very clearly here. Now, the question is uh, how to find this H of x which you are hunting out here. Okay. This, this is in time domain, but how do you find out as a function of state? And also you are interested in which time it will switch. Okay. The time of switching is also important actually. All right. So, for that we need to develop the uh, state uh, trajectories and state trajectories in other words we are interested in something like a phase plane diagram sort of thing. So, so from state equation you have to go back now and stay you tell okay, x 1 dot is x 2 whereas x 2 dot is nothing but u and now we have u star basically. So, if you redefine this u star as something like capital U which can be either plus 1 or minus 1 depending on the situation. So, in general we can write that okay, x 2 dot is u star. So, that means x 2 of t is nothing but some some initial condition times this this u star times t what u star is defined as this capital U. So, x 2 dot uh, sorry x 2 of t is nothing but x 2 of uh, 0 plus u times t. So, then x 1 dot is x 2 so that means x 1 dot is nothing but this expression. So, x 1 of t is nothing but x 1 of 0 plus integral of this that means x 2 of 0 times t plus half u t square actually. Okay. So, this expression is coming for the x 1 actually. Okay. And also, I mean, these are very compatible. Like, if uh, for our uh, very very early physics and all that, x two minus uh, x two of t minus x two is nothing but the velocity, uh, and the velocity is nothing but u times t acceleration times time elapsed actually. Okay, I mean, delta v is nothing but a t, and delta x. This is different between that is nothing but uh, a kind of a u t plus half a half a t square and all that. But you know earlier actually. Anyway, so these are the same similar expressions actually. Okay. So, x 2 of t is nothing but this okay, and x 1 t is nothing but that. So, here is a possibility of eliminating this time variable. Okay, because, uh, right. So, we we can do that by this express this expression we can solve for time. Okay. This is nothing but x 2 minus x 2 0 divided by u and hence you can write that x 1 is nothing but uh, now time variable can be substituted and we can write it that way and also observe that if u is plus or minus 1, 1 by u is also plus or minus 1 actually. Okay. So, whatever 1 by u is there you can substitute with this this capital U again. Okay. So, you can, can write it this way now. So, this is an expression between x 1 and x 2 including the initial condition for x 1 and x 2 and that, that do not forget actually. Okay. The moment I know initial condition for x 1 and x 2, this x 1 at any time and x 2 at any time can be written that way. Basically. So, using that uh, it is very uh, good to express in uh, I mean you can write this expression quickly that if u is positive u is plus 1 okay, then uh, time happens to be this expression okay, x 2 minus x 2 0 by 1. So, it is x 2 minus x 2 0 and x 1 okay, this relationship uh, you can just just drop this u because u is plus 1 actually. Okay. So, you can if I club these two quantities okay, that happens to be something like c 1 some because this is a constant number that is c 1 plus half uh, x 2 square and in the other one other case that u is minus 1 we will end up with the fairly similar things with uh, with sign changes and all that. So, it happens t happens to be like that where x 1 is nothing but this quantity is actually. Okay. So, c 1 and c 2 are constants okay, and depending on the situation where u is positive or negative we will end up with these expressions. So, irrespective of what you can see that x 1 is equal to c 1 plus half x 2 square or x 1 is c 2 minus half x 2 square. If you see these relationships, these are nothing but parabolas or other family of parabolas in the in the phase plane actually. Okay. So, it depends on the constant which contain again the constants depend on on the initial condition values largely. So, essentially depending on the initial condition where you are in the phase plane and phase plane is nothing but a plot between x 1 and x 2 really. So, in the phase plane depending on the initial condition we can, can end up with this type of a parabola or this kind of a parabola actually. So, this is what is picturally represented here. So, you have if, if u is positive that like plus 1 then these are the parabolas that will rem, uh, result I mean depending on the, the initial condition actually. Okay. So, with time it will start from somewhere here and it will start evolving that way. Okay. If it starts from here, it will start evolving that way, so like that. 
But if you start from somewhere here, it will evolve that way. We, okay, again, depends on u is minus one. If if you apply control being minus one, it will it will happen that way. Actually, okay. All right. So note that these arrow marks indicate evolution of trajectories with increase of time, which is obvious actually. All right. Now our job is not yet done. We want to find a, a good solution to that actually. So what happens here? Now at t equal to t f, our objective is to drive x1 of tf and x2 of tf to equal to 0 basically. So, we have to analyze that particular case and obviously, it will not happen everywhere. The, the solution tells us that it writes on this particular trajectory here, okay, it has to come to 0 or if it is in this side of the story, it has to write on this particular trajectory only basically, okay, it will come to 0. Any other thing, it will miss 0 and go away actually. All right. So, this particular situation, you can, it depends again the initial condition sort of relationship. So, we take that relationship, then put it 0, 0 here and end end up with some expression like this actually. Right. So, this expression what you see here is, okay. Okay. We start with this expression and then time we are trying to analyze actually. Okay. So, we are putting this x, this is 0 and this is 0 and then analyzing this expression really. Okay, so, this lands up with some, some equation like that. So, essentially, it is a collection of points okay, which defines the switching curve. Again, depending on u, u is plus 1, it will result something, u is minus 1, it will result the other family actually. Okay. u is plus 1, this is what will represent, this is denoted as gamma plus and if it is u is minus 1, this will result in that sense this particular curve is defined as gamma minus actually. Right. All right. So, these two curves will evolve and one is called gamma plus, the other one is gamma minus. This will, these are uh, on this curve, we are able to transfer any initial state to 0 actually. Right. So, as formally speaking, the locus gamma plus uh, is defined something like this, x 1 and x 2 such that x 1 is equal to half x 2 square and gamma minus is x 1 and x 2 such that x 1 is minus half x 2 square. This is valid in this, okay, when x 2 is negative, this segment, okay, in this segment x 2 is negative. So, this is this gamma plus is defined in this segment, especially this trajectory only and the other case is especially the trajectory again. All right. So, uh, we can combinedly write them as something like this. We can uh, let me form, form an union of these two curves, gamma plus union gamma minus and combined it can be written something like that. X 1 is nothing but equal to minus half of X 2 times modulus of X 2. Yeah, this will represent this side and that will represent that side actually. So, this is called switching curve actually. Now, accordingly after knowing this switching curve, we can define uh, some phase plane regions and accordingly we will define r plus and r minus and r plus happens to be this all these points where this condition is satisfied x 1 is strictly less than this expression minus half of x 2 times x 2 modulus and uh, r minus is the region where this x 1 is strictly greater than this x same express, expression. In other words, if once we define this gamma which is this curve. Okay, this entire region towards the left side is nothing but r plus and entire region towards the right side is r minus actually. Right. This is what is written here. So, now what you are telling here, the control strategy is something like this. If the, if the system is initially on gamma plus, okay, if somehow the initial condition happens to be on gamma plus, then simply apply plus equal to plus 1, you are done actually. At some point of time, you will reach the final point 0 0. If it happens to be on gamma minus, okay, then you simply apply minus 1 and at some point of time it will take you to that actually again. But if it remain, if it happens to be somewhere in the r plus or r minus, what do you do? Okay. Now, this observation is very, very interesting here. If it happens to be in r plus, let us say. So, what we will do? We have to apply plus 1 control. So, the trajectory will involve somewhere like this. And here it will actually uh, intersect this, uh, this switching curve at some point of time. Once it intersects, you ride on the switching curve, it will take you there. Okay. 
And similarly, if it happens to be R minus, okay, something like this, then you first apply minus 1, okay, and it will it will intersect the switching curve. And once it intersects the switching curve, then you change this into controller, it will take you there actually. Okay. So, very, very close to what is called a sliding mode control and all that, those of you know sliding mode and all that, something very similar happening here. Okay. All right. So now somebody can argue. Wait a second. I can I can actually do this this way also. Why should I take uh, this? I mean, why should I take this uh, negative minus negative control and go this way and then way, then go to zero? I can actually also start with some positive control, then apply negative control. I will intersect again this uh, this switching curve somewhere, and then I'll again switch the sign and go. The thing is, it is not allowed. First of all, you can clearly see that uh, intuitively feel that this path will take more time. Okay, compared to this path, okay. so that uh, that violates the minimum time situation, and also it violates from the theorem that we told the maximum number of switches can be at, at the most two here. Okay. Uh, sorry, at the most one actually. Right, you can go back to that theorem. Okay, at the most n minus one time. The original system is normal, and it has all eigenvalues being positive and all that, then it can switch uh, at the most n minus 1 time. n is 2 here, so n minus 1 is 1. Okay. So, that kind of situation is is not allowed really. Okay. This will violate that condition also basically. All right. So, what is the final form of control law? It turns out that it is positive 1 plus 1. Okay. If it happens to be in this region, okay negative 1 if it happens to be in that region actually. Okay. But to implement it, we can define this quantity, okay, z is nothing but this this expression and if z happens to be positive, then we apply minus 1, z happens to be strictly negative, we apply plus 1 and if z happens to be exactly 0 and all that, then, uh, then depending on x 2 is positive, we apply minus 1 and x 2 is negative, it happens to be plus 1. That is on the switching curve really and these are outside the switching curve actually. Really. So, essentially one can observe that if you, if you define a quantity like this and operate a control law like that, this is essentially a nonlinear control even though the system is linear. So, we will end up with a bang bang control for this minimum time optimal control problem, but the elegant thing is we actually came up with a state feedback control law also basically. Then uh, as a curiosity, somebody wants to compute how much time really it takes to go there to the origin and all that expression can also be derived uh, depending on where you are okay. and this expression happens to be like this actually. Some references you can, and all you can see or you can derive it yourself also basically. Okay. So, this can also be computed and to, to know how much time it takes and you can actually implement this control in computers and then then uh, monitor the time taken and all that it will uh, it will match to that value actually. All right. So, finally, you can somehow if you want to implement this control law, it is rather very easy. All that you have to do is this is a double integrator system plant. So, this is an integral here, integral here, u is coming here. So, after integration it is here it is x 2 dot which is u, u, after integration is x 2, after that is nothing but x 1 dot. So, after integration it is x 1. Now, here you tap x 2 okay, and then generate this half x 2 times x 2 modulo sort of thing and then combine that with x 1. So, that that will give us z okay, that is that is the expression what you are looking for okay. that will give us z and uh, flip the sign and take to the error function and then you get your controller. So, it is completely in the in the state feedback form actually which is very neat to see that and that is how we got this uh, this h of x and all that here. Okay. With the closed loop expression that you are looking for actually closed form expression results in a very neat control structure actually. All right, so more on that you can study many textbooks and then different problems you can see in the liter literature and things like that to, to have more knowledge actually. So, that is where we will stop this lecture and uh, the next lecture onwards you will see some, some fuel optimal control and then energy optimal control if time permits and probably state constrained problems as well actually. All right, so let us stop here in this class. Thank you.